All right, guys, and welcome back to the Saints for the D Channel for the content for day number 19 of our family calendar and our big match preview ahead of another massive game for Saints down at the bottom of the table on Saturday. We face Aston Villa at Villa Park, and I personally cannot wait for this one. Uh, I was really happy to see Villa get promoted, and Villa Park was the top of my to-do list at the beginning of the season. We're finally doing it, a good day planned, and hopefully Saints can put the cherry on top with three points. But before we get into the video, do make sure you are subscribed, and if you haven't yet already, enter yourself in our giveaway. You've got the chance of winning a free Southampton kit, so why wouldn't you enter? Go check out our Twitter and Instagram for details on how to enter, but you've got to be quick because the win is announced on Christmas Eve. So make sure you're following us on our socials. Right, let's get into the video. Now, of course, we've got to talk about Saints first. Back to reality on Saturday as we got back-to-back -back defeats. Obviously, we had the Newcastle one two weeks ago. But then the West Ham defeat on Saturday, 1-0 at St. Mary's, was just... There was, there was just nothing there. We offered absolutely nothing. You know, West Ham by, by far the better team in my opinion. And they, they bullied us with their physicality. We just couldn't really cope with them. Mikel Antonio had a field day and Haller looked good. And all, all these little things. We, we just didn't show up. It was back to square one, back to the drawing board. After two back-to-back -back wins and a decent performance up at Newcastle. And even a decent performance before all of that against Arsenal. You know, that was another shocker at home. And once again, it was certain players underperforming. Redmond, he had to be taken off at half-time because he was so poor. You know, I'd love to see Buffal come in personally for him on Saturday. Hoiberg, again, how many more poor performances can he have? He's our captain, and he's not shown at the moment. He was so good for us last year, but he's not showing the same physicality and presence in the midfield. He's losing the ball. I mean, his contribution to West Ham's goal was atrocious. This is a massive game, you know. Villa and us are level on points. Goal difference is the only thing that's separating us. And so if we can beat them, we'll be three points clear of the relegation zone. Even a draw would keep us intact, but losing losing would just be awful because it would potentially put us three points adrift at Christmas, which is just, I think, it's suicidal. With the fixtures coming up, three points would do nicely, especially before Christmas, as in our next three after Villa, we've got Chelsea and Spurs. Now, Crystal Palace at home in between that, but like with all the Christmas fixtures, the games come incredibly quickly. So it's going to be difficult to be picking up wins, in my opinion, especially in the form we're in at the moment. So it's not really great. Uh, so if we can get three points on Saturday, three points against Palace, I'll be very satisfied. Six points from those four. Lovely stuff. And in fairness to us, our record against Aston Villa is pretty good. We've only lost one of our last nine meetings. Obviously, we haven't met in three and a half years. And our last defeat at Villa Park came in 2004. The last meeting was at Villa Park, a 4-2 win for Saints. Very comfortable on the day. Villa had already been relegated. We were fighting for the top six. I mean, how times have changed. It was a bad day for Villa. You know, they were protesting. It was really strange. I remember it quite vaguely i didn't go but i remember hearing about all the protests that were going on at the time and so another afternoon like that would be fantastic but let's move on to the opponent aston villa it seems that they're sort of meeting expectations so far this season they're the third promoted team that we're playing we've beaten the last two so that could be a good sign but they're 17th at the moment like i said level on points with us goal difference better so that's what's keeping them out of the relegation zone and above saints in 17th. But you'd expect that their target for the first season back in the Premier League would, was just survival. They spent £100 million in the summer. You know, their championship players weren't good enough for the league for them to survive in it. And I think the recruitment was decent enough. They were instantly branded the new Fulham after spending so much in the summer. And personally, I didn't feel that was fair. You know, Fulham were predicted to go on and finish 10th after they, the signings they made the season they came up. But unfortunately, it didn't work out for them, so they came straight back down. I didn't really see anyone promoting the idea of Villa finishing the top 10 and obviously rightly so because their first season back there they weren't going to be anywhere near in all fairness. But they've got some great players who I admire. I think Grealish is fantastic. McGinn is a quality player and I also think we could do with a sort of Mings figure at the back to be honest with you. Now this is a massive part of Villa's season so if they can win on Saturday and get a few more wins in the next month you know, they'll be starting to steer themselves clear of danger. Because I do feel they've got the players to get themselves out of it. Maybe not the experience, but definitely quality. And that's something we need to look out for on Saturday. Now, they'll also have a bit of a bounce after a fantastic night on Tuesday. Thrashing Liverpool 5-0 in the League Cup quarterfinal. Of course, Liverpool played a mix of their under-18s and 23s. So, it was a field day really for Villa. They rotated too. But Liverpool did play alright. I think the 5-0 scoreline flatters 
Aston Villa a little bit. But like I said, a big win for them. They're into the semis. And so we need to sort of be aware of that. Plus the fact that they rotated means they're big players will be playing on Saturday, so you know they'll have a full strength side out, which is something we need to be wary of. But of course, I'm no expert on Aston Villa, so I've asked Max from the Villa on Tour channel to give you guys a bit of insight on all things Villa at the moment. Take it away, Max. Hello, everyone at the Saints View. Max here from the Villa on Tour YouTube channel. Dan's asked me to answer a few questions heading into Saturday's massive game, um, Villa versus Southampton. The first one, how do I think Villa season's gone so far? Well... We're 17th, which isn't awful. Um, going into the season, a lot of Villa fans are like, yeah, let's get top half. But for me, that was never really the aim. I think in, initially you'd probably take survival and then as long as we progress you know, each season, initially stay up and then push on to mid-table, I'm fine with that. So initially surviving, we had a new players, a lot of new players, sorry, um, going into this this season. So the likes of Alan Hutton, Glenn Whelan, Mile Yedinak were never ever going to step up to the Premier League. Although they were good championship players, they were never going to step up for the Premier League. So we had to sign a lot of players. Um, obviously, there, there are a lot of new nationalities that come from all over the place, lots of different leagues. So it would take time to gel and the longer they're in the same squad, the same dressing room, you know, they're, they're always going to gel a little bit more so I've got faith give the manager time give the players time to gel absolutely fine with that in terms of the Liverpool game that we played yesterday obviously we won 5-0 and we made 10 changes I believe um, from the side that played Sheffield United in our last game in the Premier League so I think that was a fully rotated side so I don't think that's going to have any influence on um, the squad that's going to play Southampton on Saturday I think there was no McGinn no Grealish that featured in the in the cup game so obviously they'll come straight back in they'll be fresh hopefully ready for the Southampton game so Southampton season so far um you know Southampton are a bit of a funny one because a few years ago under the likes of Koeman and, and Pochettino they were like top six going for European football obviously they got Europa League football but from then on, I just think their play has been picked off by Liverpool and other teams as well. And I think it's a, no offence, but I think it is a matter of time before, you know, you lot are really, really in trouble. I've got a lot of time for Haas and Hootsall, the manager. I think, you know, he's come over from Germany. He's influenced um, the style of play that Southampton are trying to play. I think he deserves time. I don't think they should sack him, especially now. Um, I, I think they should give him time. So... Southampton, they are in a sticky place at the moment. They are going to be in the bottom four or three towards the end of the season. But it's going to be a tough one to see if you lot stay up. Hopefully you don't. Um, no offence, but hopefully you go down and we stay up. But there you go. Who are the key players to look out for? Obviously, the main one is going to be Jack Grealish. A lot of people say if you stop Jack Grealish, you'll stop Aston Villa. Um, I think there's more to Villa than Grealish. Um, but in the last few games, we have relied on him a lot. Um Wesley scored in the Liverpool game, so hopefully he can keep up his, well, I'll say scoring form. Hopefully he can get another goal against Southampton, um, a big bully up top. I know he's had a bit bit of a, um, bit of a struggle so far in the last few games, but hopefully he can have an influence on the game. Um, if you had to give a score prediction, I don't see there being all too many goals. If I had to give a score, I'd probably say 1-0 Villa, clean sheet. Oh, actually, I don't know. Probably not, to be honest, because we concede a lot of goals. But then again, so do you. But I just think both sides are gonna gonna be scared going into this game because they just simply don't want to lose. Um, so I'm gonna say one nil Villa. John McGinn to score. We need these three points just to get away from the bottom three. So hopefully Villa get the three points up the Villa. Thank you for doing that, mate. Do make sure you guys go and check out Villa on tour. I've put the link in the description below. Fantastic channel if you like your football vlogs and also well-deserved winners of an FBA back in May. But on to my prediction. Now, it's, you know, fans are always going to call this sort of game a must-win. Personally, I'm going to go with the must-not-lose branding. I think if we lose this one, being three points adrift at Christmas would just be awful. Uh, suicidal, in fact. I think that would definitely be it. I think that would probably be us down. Um, I, I hate to be negative, but I just wouldn't be able to. I just can't see how we'd be able to overcome something like that. I know it's just the three points, but it's it's the mentality side of things. But drawing with them keeps us intact with them. But obviously, winning it is what we need to be looking to do. I, I do think we're good enough. If we put the sort of performances that we showed at Arsenal, at Newcastle. I know we lost the Newcastle game, uh, first half against Norwich particularly, you know, we will win the game, we're good enough to beat these, but it's about how we show up, how we manage the game, because the atmosphere is going to be class, I'd imagine, on Saturday, Villa Park's well known for its atmosphere, and I think if either side win it, it's going to be by the single goal, but I have gone for a one-all draw as my prediction, 
I do think we'll concede because we don't look like we'll keep a clean sheet, but you know, we're scoring here and there, so I think we'll score. I think it'll be a very tight game, like I said, one goal in it, potentially, if either side wins it. And I'm going to stick with the one all. But thank you very much for watching, guys. If you have enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Let me know in this comments below whether you are going on Saturday. It'd be great to see some of you in the concourse. Also, leave your score prediction. And make sure you are subscribed if you haven't yet already. More content coming up over Christmas, especially with the big games. And then the January transfer window. So you don't want to miss them. Follow us on our socials as well so you don't miss anything extra. And we'll see you tomorrow for our predicted lineup. See you then, guys.